antiquity has always brought fascinating figures to our memory. Ramses II, Alexander the Great, Hannibal, Scipio, Caesar, Cleopatra. But war was not only waged by statesmen, but mainly by men from all walks of life who armed themselves to carry out the greatest conquests and battles. Now, we will see a series of rare, curious, or unusual units that might seem strange to us today. Let's begin. It's clear that cinema loves to sugarcoat things, especially when we're dealing with a very good version of Frank Miller's graphic novel. However, we're not referring to these immortals at all. In fact, the way an immortal fought differed greatly from Hollywood's vision. The Persian immortal is known as such by the Greeks because they thought that when one died, they were immediately replaced by another companion. In connection with this, companions is the true word that the immortals used to refer to themselves. Jokingly, the Greeks called them apple bearers because the base of their spear had this apple shape as a counterbalance. Their dimensions were somewhat smaller than Greek spears, which put them at a disadvantage against the hoplites, as their shields were also made of wicker, so facing a good phalanx meant they were likely to loci in close combat. Of course, their strength lay in the bow, something they were truly skilled in, as the Persians valued long-range combat as honorable, unlike the Greeks. Under their ceremonial clothing, they wore chainmail for protection and a small short sword or even a dagger. It must be understood that the immortals were considered the elite of the army and were truly privileged. They traveled with their women, children, and received special food. The rest of the army usually subsisted in more than miserable conditions following the old cliché of quantity over quality. When Thebes decided to establish an elite battalion to rival the best infantry of the time, it understood that it needed hoplites who were united by the strongest bonds that humans could establish. Love. In this way, they arranged 150 pairs of male lovers, one older and one younger, so that seeing the lives of their beloved in peril, they would fight with renewed vigor and face the enemy with fury in case of losing them in combat. Certainly these troops had no rival, which is why they would even defeat the Spartans in the battles of Leuctra, and later in Mantinea. Defeating the hegemonic power of Hellas was no small feat, and for this, the Greek military doctrine had to be varied by creating the system of the oblique phalanx. Their duration was very ephemeral, like the hegemony of their polis, Thebes, as in about thirty years both the sacred band and the city were raised by the Macedonian push. In the Battle of Cheronea, the Macedonians destroyed the Greek army, which fled in disarray. Except for a group of brave men, the sacred band of Thebes, which held the position until the last man, fighting for their city and their honor. Two hundred and fifty-four men died, and with the fall of the Paulus, the battalion would never recover. If you're enjoying the video, help us grow. Subscribe and click on like so you don't miss any videos. The Punic Wars brought to the Iberian Peninsula a small world war of the time. Two visions of the Mediterranean clashed to decide who should control it. Sponsored by their gods and traditions, both the Romans and the Carthaginians were to engage in a war to the bitter end, which would culminate in the absolute destruction of Carthage. Rome became the mistress of the Mare Nostrum, and consequently, it saw itself with the military capacity to subjugate the rest of the enemies of the Eternal City. It was in these wars, initially on the Punic side, where the Balearic warriors were to gain the fame they have today. The sling mechanism is simple and can be made with any type of fiber at hand, including animal tendons. The projectile is also relatively easy to find, as it is a stone or a small piece of sturdy metal. Stones with holes have been found so that they whistled when they took flight, demoralizing the opposing army. Their effectiveness was overwhelming, so much so that the Roman Republic soon enlisted their services as auxiliaries, balancing the scales in ranged combat. In fact, 
when the Romans continued their expansion activities and reached the Balearic Islands, they had to cover their boats with leather because the slingers threw their projectiles with such force and precision that they would create breaches in the hull's waterline, sinking some ships. The origin of these warriors is unknown, but the first testimony of their existence is marked by Lycophron of Chalcis. In one of his poems about Trojan refugees, he speaks of how, when they arrived on the islands, they saw mothers instructing their children from a young age. The first steps consisted of hitting a piece of bread on a stick in the distance. If they missed, they would not taste a bite, so they had to learn their mastery to be able to eat. In any case, these peculiar troops earned a well-deserved reputation for their terrible effectiveness in combat. War chariots of antiquity were formidable beasts when facing poorly equipped infantry. These horse-drawn behemoths were among the first technological advancements when it comes to military equipment. It is not clear who were the first to use them, as expected. The archaeological record of the time is quite vague. What is clear is that the Hittite Empire was the one that truly perfected this invention, creating light chariots that allowed for two soldiers and a driver. Typically, one of the soldiers would carry a shield, light armor, and a spear, while the other wore armor studded with metal plates. Their mobility and versatility allowed the Hittite army to spread across much of Anatolia and the Levant, where they clashed with Ramsey II for control of this territory. There they faced off in the Battle of Kadesh, where two different models of chariot warfare clashed, the Hittite, somewhat heavier, and the Egyptian, much lighter, relying on the composite bow for attack. They are better known in the medieval period for their use by the Byzantine Empire, but their emergence dates back to a much more ancient period. In practice, a cataphract is a unit of heavy cavalry that is fully armored. Both the horse and the rider are covered in mail or lamellar armor, making them practically invincible at the cost of increased fatigue and slowness. Their origin is in the region of Iran, where the early peoples quickly domesticated the horse and made significant innovations for riding it. Obviously, their upkeep was expensive, so the units were scarce at first. The first time a cataphract fought in Europe was during the Greco-Persian War in the 5th century BC. However, this cavalry would continue to be perfected, also being used by the Seleucid Empire that Scipio defeated in the Battle of Magnesia where they were not decisive either. They would be decisive in the Battle of Carhe, where the Parthians literally destroyed the Roman army thanks to this cavalry, causing Crassus to die and causing a real instability in the Roman Republic.